Venus shines bright, and we explore some incredible globular clusters. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see and image in the night sky for June of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. With no major meteor showers this month, let's load up Sky Safari to take a look at some of the best views you can get of our closest neighbor, the Moon. Let's begin with its phases, with a full Moon coming up on June 3rd. Last quarter on the 10th, New Moon on the 18th, and First Quarter Moon on June 26th. The Moon makes some close approaches to the planets this month, beginning with Saturn in the early morning on June 10th, Jupiter on June 14th, and Venus and Mars right after sunset on June 21st, making a beautiful trio in the early night sky. If you own a pair of binoculars, go outside between the new moon and first quarter moon right after sunset to study the lunar surface. Take your time looking up and down the terminator line. That's the division on the moon between lightness and darkness, and it's where you're going to get some incredible shadows and mountain ranges that are going to pop off the lunar surface. If you own a telescope, up the magnification and see how far you can push your equipment depending on what you own and the conditions of the atmosphere. I was just out with my telescope a few weeks ago taking a video of the lunar surface for an upcoming video I'm working on for iPhone astrophotography. If you're able to get out to take any pictures of the moon with your phone, DSLR, and a telescope, please share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. To hone your skills for visually observing the lunar surface, try out the Astronomical League's Lunar Program. I completed this a few years ago, and it's a wonderful way to study the lunar surface using the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, and a telescope. And once you complete it and get it verified, you get a certificate of completion and a nice pen. I'll be sure to leave a link to the Astronomical League's website in the description of this video to help you find this lunar program and also any local astronomy clubs in your area that I would encourage you to go out and join. With the moon covered, let's move on to the planets of our solar system, and there's no greater planet out right now than Venus, which shines incredibly bright right after sunset. We've been tracking Venus for the past few months, and it's around June 4th that it reaches its most prominent position in the sky. Go out to see it as the first object to pop into view as the sun sets, and if you own a telescope, turn your attention to the phases of Venus. From the start of June to the end of June, you can see how the phases slowly change each day, just like our moon. I've always found Venus a tough target to image, but if you try to get some pictures or video of it with a smartphone or DSLR camera, I'll leave a link to some videos in the description below that can help you with processing your pictures. With binoculars or a telescope, check out Venus as it moves right past the Beehive Cluster M44 on June 13th. Not to be outdone, Mars actually moves right through the Beehive Cluster between June 1st and June 3rd. Even though Mars is moving away from us and getting lower to the horizon each night, this will be a great view and a nice challenge for those of you who are into astrophotography. Before sunrise, Jupiter continues its climb in the east, but it's really an early bird target for those of you out there, and I do not include myself in that list. A couple hours earlier, Saturn rises, but it's really going to be a target that we're going to focus on more this year with its close approach to Earth coming in August of 2023. Neptune travels in between Saturn and Jupiter, and Uranus and Mercury continue to be tough targets in the morning sky this June. As we leave our solar system behind and focus on deep sky objects, it's important to know that for this portion of the video, sky conditions are going to become more critical. Making sure that you're as far away from light pollution as you possibly can be, and that does include the moon, can really go a long way to improving your views of these deep sky objects because of how faint they are. I observe the night sky with a pair of 10x50 binoculars 
an 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, and I image it using a Canon DSLR, Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and Samyang 135mm lens. The objects that we're going to focus on this June are globular clusters. These are tens to hundreds of thousands of stars that are densely packed together by gravity, looking almost like a blurry snowball through binoculars, but as you resolve them with more magnification and larger telescopes, they can start to reveal some dense, fine detail that is just beautiful to see through the eyepiece. Let's begin our observations this June by going outside about an hour and a half to two hours after sunset and facing towards the west. We'll begin by moving up from the Virgo cluster that we viewed last month until we come across one of the finest globular clusters in the night sky, M3. It's one I've recently viewed using my 10x50 pair of binoculars, revealing a small blur floating in the sky. Switching over to the telescope or long exposure astrophotography, it really starts to come to life, revealing the fine details from the blurry dense cloud of gravity holding these hundreds of thousands of stars together. Let's move back towards the southeast and work our way up to the constellation Ophiuchus, which is home to a fine collection of globulars. Scan this part of the sky with your binoculars or star hop with a telescope from Sabic until you come across and study M10 and M12, two of the brightest globulars in this constellation. Let's continue over to the constellation Hercules for our main event this June, M13, the Great Hercules Cluster. At a distance of roughly 25,000 light years, you're looking at over 100,000 stars densely packed together. I took this picture of the Hercules cluster from my backyard using over one hour's worth of data. The raw pictures were stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and then processed using PixInsight. Regardless of whether you're visually observing with binoculars and a telescope or imaging the night sky through astrophotography, this is one I come back to every year to view and study. I've got another video covering some incredible deep sky objects in the spring and summer sky and I'll be sure to leave a link to those videos in the description below. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can get out to see and image in the night sky this June. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let me know what you hope to get out to see and image and any observation reports that you may have in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.